first of all, I didn't want to be a nurse. I, my mother was a nurse. My sister was going to go to a nursing school. My brother was going to medical school. I said, not for me. I don't want to do the same thing that they're doing. I'm going to be something different. So I'm going to go to a liberal arts college and I'm going to be major in languages and I'm going to do, teach languages. My mother said, you have to have something to do. You can't just be a wife. You've got to have something you can fall back on because she had had that experience. So I went to Albertus Magnus College in New Haven and I was going to major in languages, but I wasn't good at languages. <laughs> so, but I was getting very good marks in the sciences, chemistry, biology, so forth. And my mother said, you know, maybe you should go to nursing school. Oh, no, I don't think so. Well, let's just go to look. So we went to New York to visit Columbia Nursing School and Cornell Nursing School. I decided on Columbia, and I went, I went to Columbia for nursing school, and I loved it from the minute I got there. So I went to Columbia, and I got teacher's college. I got an MA and, and an MED and was just admitted to the doctoral program at Teachers College when Don said, you know, he'd been recruited at Baylor College of Medicine in Houston. Houston, I know Houston. <laughs> so we came here, 1980, and I went over to UT and walked in and, and introduced myself, and I'm the first person I met was, became a very good colleague, Dr. Dorothy Otto, and uh, she said, oh, our dean is Arla Wayne Swart, and she knows about Columbia. I know she knows about Columbia. She would probably like to talk to you. So that was it. I got hired to work at UT School of Nursing. And uh, one day, there was a, a man named Ed Frescas came from Senecor Foundation, which is a residential drug and alcohol treatment program. And he said, do you have is there any faculty member here who could come and open a little clinic for us? And that in that way, our <clears throat> residents don't have to leave when they have minor illnesses or when they cut their finger or so forth and so on. Because when they go to the hospital district to get treatment, they sometimes leave and abscond from the program. So if they could have, if we could have somebody have a little clinic. And I thought, gee, that's a good idea. I can take my nursing students they could do the physicals that were needed. They could do the minor, treat the minor air in injuries and so forth. So that became my real interest to increase the knowledge of addiction in nursing curricula. And that's how it kind of how it got started. What I learned was this should be treated just like diabetes, hypertension. It's a chronic relapsing brain disease. We do not stigmatize and say, you're an addict. You're not going to take care of you. Because they should be treated just like everybody else. And that's what I, we've been trying to convey. I'm not sure we got there yet, but we've been trying to make that happen. And I became interested in mindfulness. And I took the um, eight-week course. And I took a couple of workshops and all this. And I thought, you know, this might be very good for people who are in recovery, particularly for people who are in recovery in a difficult program like a therapeutic community, which is where I was working with Cinecor. So I did a pilot study, and I found that the people who had the mindfulness didn't, uh, didn't drop out as quickly and so forth and so on. It was helpful. And then I got a big grant, an R01, to do a much larger study, and that was truly the case that the mindfulness helped them. It occurred to me that the pastors in the community would be ideal for spotting addiction, substance use, misuse, and so maybe oh, I should offer some courses for them. So I, I got a small grant from some private thing. <laughs> I set up a program for pastors, and nobody came, or very few people came. I mentioned this, and a man spoke up, and he was the drug counselor for Prairie View A&M, Darrell Williams. He's passed away, too. He said, 
you ought to come to my church. He said, you'll get a lot of pastors who'll come there. His church was Windsor Village. So I went to Windsor Village and we got a lot of people coming and a lot of pastors taught them how to recognize the problem of addiction and not to stigmatize it and how to help the people. And that worked very, very well. I also had a small grant to, um, to teach nurses in the medical center. Every hospital could send some nurses and we would teach them how to recognize the problem in their general population. So from working at Windsor, I became uh, good friends of the um, man who was a youth pastor, Pastor Thomas Walker. And we devised a program for school children that would teach them all kinds of social skills and all kinds of other skills, even nutrition, and that we set up that program. There was a colleague of mine who had met at a Mercer who was on the Brown faculty. And, uh, and, uh, and he had known McGovern. And he said to McGovern, you know, you've got somebody right in Houston who's doing this work. Her name is Marianne Marcus. And you should call her. So um, I got a call from McGovern's secretary. Would I come and meet with him? He said, all right. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to endow a professorship for you so you'll have money to continue this work. And I almost fell on the floor. That was probably my proudest moment as a faculty member to have him say that, you know, I want to recognize this one. I go one every semester. I taught a lecture and a program on substance use and the elderly in the gerontology course. Tell me about Mrs. Kowalski. You're looking at her. <laughs> I go in and have been going in every semester also to be a patient. A mean, nasty, Polish immigrant woman who screams and yells at the students, what the hell are you doing in my apartment? Blah, 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 blah and uh, put them through the, the ringer in terms of how they would treat a patient in the community. So I, I was, my acting skills were, that I, I really got that down pretty good. Dorothy Otto was Mrs. Malone, so she went in as the patient, Mrs. Malone. Mrs. Malone was nicer, but Mrs. Kowalski is, can be really tough. You know, and, that, and then at the end of the class, and you do it, I did it like three times in a day or something like that, you know, they just over and over them. Uh, they introduced me as to who I really am. And we talk about how they responded to me and, you know, what the feedback should be, <clears throat> how they should have responded to me and so forth. And it's based on patients that I've seen in the community. You know, there are people who just don't want you to tell them what to do. Mrs. Kowalski is doing a lot of drinking. She has a bourbon thing. And uh, she is cut off from her community, cut off from her family. All of the things that nurses sometimes have to overcome when they meet patients in the community. So, yeah, that's, that's a fun part of what I've been doing, yeah. I used to be, I used to teach a mindfulness class here and every Friday morning. And we have I've stopped doing that because I'm trying to stay away from people. I think it's a wonderful nursing school. And I think that it has certainly, certainly some of the students that I've had and some of the follow up of, of the students has been wonderful. And I think that it has had a good impact on the medical center as a whole because these students are out there practicing and, and learning. And I think it's, it's strong. The thing that, that's stronger now than when I first arrived is the research. There is research going on, nursing research. And I think the students are all, so many of the students are involved in that. Uh, I've had several doctoral students do really nice studies. And there, there are two of them are now 
on the faculty. And I think that's important. So yeah, I think it's a strong, strong nursing school.